Welcome to the Runpreneur Podcast with me, your host, Sierra Carter, where you're listening to the number one podcast that will help you increase your energy and run your life. Let's go. Welcome, you guys, to another episode of the Runpreneur Podcast. I'm Sierra, and today we have an exciting guest on the show, and I'm super excited that he's here. He's here with the company Zensaw. Now, if you've never heard of Zensaw, You are going to know exactly who they are today, and you're going to love them. And if you do know them, you probably have some awesome, fun compression socks, compression sleeves, socks, any kind of gear that's going to help your athletic life become better. And he's here today talking about a new product launch that's going to help you in recovery and also help you become a better athlete. So I'm super excited to have him here on the show because he's going to tell you all about the technology, what it does, and... Maybe give a little bit of hint when it is coming out, and I'll give my own review as well. So, Elliot, go ahead and introduce yourself. Definitely. Uh, thanks for having me on. I'm excited to be here. Um, so I manage product development for Zensa, which means uh, basically from the moment we have an idea of what we want to do, um, I take it from that all the way through when we launch it. Um, so I get I get to try on lots of prototypes around the, around the office. I got a little basketball hoop set up outside. So my process is basically uh, – get the stuff in, go outside, shoot around a little bit, see what I like, see what I don't like, and then send notes and then keep going from there. Um, so what really drew me to Zensa in the first place was their mission statement, which I know you really like too, I love um, which is mission. that we want to help all athletes perform without limits. Um, so when Zensa started, people were using cotton t-shirts, um, just items that weren't really made for for um, for running, for, for athletics. Um, and these were really holding people back from from achieving the best they could athletically. Um, so we we decided to use seamless technology, compression technology, um, to improve athletes' performance and and go from their their apparel holding them back to their apparel propelling them forward. Um, so that's what drew me to Zens in the first place. What I love about the company, having worked there for for almost uh, just over a year now, um, is that everyone at Zensa is really passionate about whatever it is. Um, they like to do. So for me, that's basketball. Um, running, not so much yet. I'm over like 10 miles for the month, which I'm proud of. But um, Ooh, congratulations. getting there. That's, that's a big one. That's um, still great. Yeah. Um, uh, for, for other people, it's running, it's yoga, it's Pilates, it's all, all sorts of other things. But everyone at Zensa is really passionate about what they do. And so we understand athletes who want to get better, who are passionate about their own craft. Um, and so we can we can really connect with the community on their level. Um and know that they know that we understand what they need out of their products. I definitely have to say that's one thing. When I found Zenton myself, at the time I was having shin splints, major shin splints. And I, I always have some kind of running injury at when I was starting to run because my body was getting used to it. But I got to a point where I told myself I need to get compression sleeves. Everybody was talking about compression sleeves. Now I wasn't I'm not one of those people that likes to just get like black socks or, you know, purple, turquoise. You know, it has to be fun. So when you guys had the prints on everything, I loved it. And not to mention it's amazing quality. So and then just recommending it to people that I know, people are using it for all sorts of sports, not just running. And I know particularly I give it to a lot of like push it on to a lot of my runner friends but i know a lot of people using it for so many different things and like what we'll talk about today this heat recovery sock you can literally use this for every single sport and it's going to help you improve on your fitness level no matter what you do now with this uh technology that we're going to be talking or product that we're going to be talking about today were you before we get into, get into it, were you the one that actually was on the team designing it? How did this work with your job? So actually, um, our CEO um, came to me one day with an article about um, why you should be using heat to treat soft tissue injuries versus ice. Um, so that was really the first time we came up with it. But from that point on, um, I was the one working with our factory and um, going back and forth um, with prototypes and making sure everything was exactly the way we wanted it. So go back to the, the statement, why heat versus ice? Cause, I mean, a lot of us know when you're done running, when you're done swimming, when you're done playing basketball, go ice your knees, go ice your legs. If I have shin splints, go ice them. What, what changed? What, what kind of article, what information was in that article that really flipped it around 
for Zensa to go the way of more heat versus ice. Yeah. So, I mean, since, since the mid um, 20th century, about then, maybe the 70s or 80s, icing injuries and icing sore muscles has really been um, just the status quo. Um, the idea behind it is you have swelling, you have inflammation, inflammation as a result of uh, overexertion or, or fatigue, and you want to use ice to sort of get rid of that swelling and inflammation. But when you, when you stop and think about what exactly is the inflammation, and you're, you wonder, like, why is inflammation bad? What makes it bad? Why do you want to get rid of it? You realize that's not actually what you want to be doing. So inflammation is the body's natural immune response to um, some type of injury. Really what's happening is it's bringing these immune system cells to the damaged area. It's cleaning up damaged tissue, so it's getting that out of there. It's repairing and remodeling the area and building it back. Um, so what you're doing when you're icing, um, what icing does is it constricts the blood vessels. It makes them smaller. And so this constricts the flow of those immune system cells, which then reduces swelling. But what you're really doing is you're keeping your immune system from healing the injury. And recent studies have actually shown that when you ice, you're actually in some cases delaying recovery and also in some cases doing more damage to the, to the area than actually healing it. Um, now on the flip side, if ice, if cold constricts blood vessels, heat expands them. So in the same way that we're constricting blood flow and, and fluid flow when we, when we ice an injury, we're actually allowing more facilitating the flow of these immune system cells to the damaged area when we're heating. Um, and that and that makes it easier for for those cells to get in and clean up and repair the damaged area. Um, so essentially, the question is now, how do we get rid of that swelling? You can't bend if your knee is is full of this fluid, you can't bend your knee. You can't right. do whatever activity you're trying to do. Um, the answer is actually you, you want to do it passively through movement. So obviously, if you have a torn ACL, don't go running around, but um, you can do, like if you have a sprained ankle, for example, like they always used to tell me whenever I sprained my ankle playing basketball, you want to you want to lie down and you want to try and spell the alphabet with your foot yep. to try and move it around. And the idea behind that is you're you're passively clearing out um, clearing out the inflammation from the area in a in a safer and less damaging way than you are, than you would be with ice. Um, now, like I said with the torn ACL example, if you're not able to move, if it's dangerous, if it could cause more damage to do movement. You can also do things like electrical stimulation of the muscles. So that sends electrical pulses to the muscles, which then moves the fluid um, by causing the muscles to contract. Yeah, that I've a lot of athletes and more and more people themselves are starting to do that. And they're also starting to. Um, I'm trying to they they're cryotherapy. That's what it was called. They're also cryotherapy places are actually also starting to jump in around i know here where we are up in the space coast there we have i think we have at least three maybe if not more places that are starting to do cryotherapy so it's kind of interesting that all these studies are starting to come out that you know cryotherapy i think it's like you jump in to something super cold it shocks your body um and then it's, it's supposed to help you recover but now other studies are showing that you know heat's actually the way to do it so Zensaw is actually jumping on that, right? And they're becoming like one of the first to lead with this technology. And I have it right here. The heat recovery socks, if you can see it right, yep, right in here. So they are long socks. They are, you know, like, like a, a type of compression sock. I'm not saying it's a compression sock, but it's a long sock, probably about the same length a compression sock would be. And I mean, Obviously, it's not it's not made of metal. It's not it's not made of plastic. Something weird where it's uncomfortable to put on for this technology. It's a very nice sock, and I can tell you right now they're very comfortable and they are warm, especially when it's cold outside. Now, would you like to explain to everybody in this sock what kind of technology is in there that's going to help the help produce that heat so it can we can recover quicker? Definitely. Um, so the first thing is we're going to, uh, I'm going to go over what type of heat we're using here, right? Because before we can talk about what's in the sock, we have to know right. um, what the, uh, what we're, we're trying to do with it. Um, so when you walk outside, you feel the warmth of the sun, right? That's the warmth of infrared rays. So this, this longer wavelength of light than what's visible, um, traveling millions and millions of miles from the sun all the way to the earth. And, and that's how it transfers the, the energy um, to you, making you feel warm. 
Um, so that's the type of heat that we're using in this sock. Um, and there, there are both there are the benefits of heating, and then there's also other biological benefits as a result of using far infrared rays that we can talk about a little bit later. But that's generally what we're trying to do is we're trying to utilize these infrared rays in order to provide heat to the muscles. Um, so the way we do that is recent advances in the way that yarn manufacturers can produce their yarns has allowed them to embed um, think these little crystals called bioceramics um, into the yarn permanently. So it doesn't wash out. It doesn't, um, you don't feel it. They're microscopic particles. But what these specific materials do is they absorb heat and then they convert it and re-emit it out as these infrared rays. So these these materials are able to transform the body's heat from your from in this case of the socks from your your calves from your, your ankles from your feet and then transform it and send it back at the muscles in the form of these infrared rays. Um, so it's a very subtle heating effect. You're not going to feel hot. You're not going to feel sweaty. It's a very breathable fabric, but it is providing these infrared rays constantly at the muscles, helping them recover. Right. And they they definitely do that real quick. I just want to I want to give my take on them because I got to I've been able to use them for the past maybe a couple months actually just to test them out and see how they're actually doing. And a big thing with me. So back in January, I went out to Breckenridge and for a ski trip. So what are you going to do in Breckenridge? You're most likely going to ski and you're probably going to ski every single day you're there. You're going to take advantage of it, especially when you're from Florida. So I went out there and of course I'm still kind of in the marathon race training schedule. I had signed up for an Ironman coming up in May and another mar uh, marathon in April. So I couldn't take too much time off. Even if I was skiing, I still had to get my legs moving. So I was skiing from like 9 to 4 p.m. and I was also running. Right. So it was a, a large toll on my legs throughout the day. Now, the first three days I was there and it wasn't the skiing alone. It was the running and skiing because I had skied a few times prior to going out to Breckenridge. And my legs didn't hurt this bad, but I was running and I was skiing all day. And that the first three days, my legs were in so much pain at night and the next day so it was a constant cycle because i wouldn't i wasn't gonna rest while i was out there i was pretty much out there to have a good time and so my legs were hurting now the fourth day i finally remembered what i brought in my suitcase when i got to another airbnb and unpacked everything for another 10 days and i had i had my heat recovery socks with me so i actually started wearing these very like religiously at night and throughout the night just to help my legs and i can tell you the rest of the time when i was running i wasn't running like tw 20 miles but i was running like f at least five or six miles on top of the skiing running and using them at night and skiing my feet stopped hurting and my legs didn't feel as swollen and they didn't feel as fatigued now of course there was still a little bit there because i can't expect to not have any of that but it actually made a significant difference from the first three days to the last, I guess, like 12 that I was out there. So it does make a huge difference. And it is something that if you're very aware and know how your body's working, you can see it make a difference. So I think that's probably one of the most powerful things about this technology that you have created is it, it's not just something very subtle. It's Every, you can see it in yourself, especially when you're trying to do some kind of, you know, high energy or high impact sport. Now, yeah, I mean, yeah. skiing and skiing and running every day is right? pretty pretty intense. So that that's right. definitely our goal is to help people be able to do that more without um, without getting too sore, getting too fatigued. Right now, going into um, the technology, was this was this a technology? So I'm it, it exists. Was it something that you had thought of before or ever had an idea of kind of implementing into your products? And do you, is this where the product stops for the technology? Or do you think you're going to have other products out there um, that are going to use the same technology once you see, once people start realizing the kind of effect that it has on their performance? Well, I'll answer the second part of that question first. We got a lot of, gotcha. we got a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of stuff I'm working <laughs> on with, with this technology. So you'll be seeing a lot more of it in the future. Um, but that's, we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, as far as how we settle on the technology, we actually, um, people have been using infrared lasers um, to help them, 
help them recover. Um, so that's very, very direct on a, a injured or fatigued area. Um, that's, that's a little bit cost, not very cost effective for the average person. Um, another thing is people use uh, what's called a far infrared sauna. So it's when you go to a normal sauna, it may be hot rocks. They pour water on it, create steam. Um, an infrared sauna doesn't use that. It has a bunch of infrared bulbs basically set up in a room that heat the room and, and heat you up that way. Again, your gym might have it, but it's not something you're going to have in your house most likely. Um, so we, we saw from a lot of research and from a lot of different areas that the best way to use heat for recovery was many, in many cases, infrared rays. Mm -hmm. Um, it's only recently that we were able to use that in our yarns in order to achieve that in, in this way. We actually did look into getting heat through some other, some other avenues, but none of them were, I would say as elegant or as, um, efficient at supplying those, the heating as, as this type of technology was. Now, what makes these socks different from compression socks? I know that will probably be a question that comes up if people say they have compression socks. What's the difference? Other than right. the so, infrared technology. But what right. makes them different? So um, so our, our socks are made specifically for recovery. Gotcha. Um, so w when you're making something for recovery, you have to think about how am I going to feel after I get back from my six hours of skiing and then my five mile run. Right. <laughs> right. Are you going to want to, are you going to want to have a sock that's really difficult to get on over your foot? Um, that, that, that feels a little bit constrictive maybe. Um, or are you going to want something that's easy to get on? That's lightweight, that's breathable. Um, and that really helps you make, make you feel better. Um, now compression on its own can help with recovery. Um, but where it really shines is, is during, during activity. If you have a high compression sock, it can boost circulation it can uh, boost performance. Um, that is not to say that this sock, that the heat recovery sock can't be used during, during exercise. I actually use it when I run sometimes when I'm doing slower runs. Right. Um, but compression socks, I would say are more for performance, whereas these ones are made with less compression um, and to be a little bit easier to get on over your, over your tired uh, fatigued feet um, to make it ideal for recovery. Right. Absolutely. So I think, I think, well, one, that answer is my question, why I would choose heat recovery versus the compression socks themselves. Now, would you recommend using these while you're working out or should you focus more on just having them as a recovery for that reason? So for, for maximum effect, um, I would say you can wear them, definitely wear them when you're working out. Um, one of the benefits of the far infrared technology, we can get into that now is so when when you supply heat through just like a heating pad right that's just you're putting like a hot thing on your muscles right um the issue with that is that your muscles are made up of a lot of fluid fluid's not a very good water specifically is not a very good conductor of heat right so when you put that heating pad on your muscle you're really heating your skin and then just like an upper layer of, uh, of the tissue and you're not really getting down to the to the deep tissue areas where a lot of the fatigue and a lot of the the damage um from breaking down your muscles from working out might might be um, so with far infrared rays, you're actually able to penetrate a lot deeper into that tissue, um, and sort of give you that, that effect from the inside out. Um, so one, you're getting the heating effect, which is expanding your, your blood vessels and allowing more of that fluid to pass through, right. um, which during activity is really helpful because obviously the more blood be, can be carried to your muscles, the less star for oxygen they are, which means the less lactic acid is produced, less fatigue, but also infrared rays have an effect on your cells where they essentially stimulate your cells to produce a protein. And when that protein attaches to a red blood cell, it increases the amount of oxygen that that red blood cell can carry. So with the heat, you're expanding your blood vessels, allowing for more flow of blood. And then you're also, the infrared rays allows your blood to carry more oxygen. So you're able to get a lot more oxygen to your muscles while you're working out and while you're recovering, which means you're going to get a lot less lactic acid buildup. No, I, I think that's a very, very powerful thing. And especially for people who are not familiar with this process, I know a lot of people think, um, well, I like to think of it this way. So if you say your foot falls asleep, right? So we, we all have, we all go into those days where our foot has just completely fallen asleep because we cut off that circulation. Now, during that time, 
there's nothing, there's no nutrients, there's no oxygenated blood, there's nothing going to those muscles to recover. So I, I like to think of a lot of this technology that same way. If your foot falls asleep, if you put on compressions, it helps you know get the blood flowing quicker to that muscle or wherever your foot has fallen asleep. And same thing with these, just heating up the muscle helps expand the blood vessels and helps get nutrients a lot quicker after your foot has fallen asleep. I just like, it's, it's hard to break it down, but it makes a lot of sense once you realize how powerful this technology is. Now, as far as product launches getting towards the end of the podcast here, when can we expect to start seeing this for, um, uh, when can we expect to see this drop in the next few weeks? Do you guys have a set date or are we still going to be checking our newsletters for it? I would uh, keep an eye on the newsletter in the next week or two. That's all I'll say for now. Uh, but it's coming. <laughs> so be here soon. if you're if you're not signed up for their newsletter, now's the time to head over to their website and get signed up and also look at their other products. So, yeah, I think this is awesome information. Now, before you go, well, one, is there anything else you'd like to add about the compression or the heat recovery sock itself? Um, just I, I wear it all the time. Um, it really helps me um, recover. I, I'm not as I used to be able to go go play basketball for like three hours and then feel fine after. Um, now not so much. Right. So it really helps me get get back going uh, when I when I want to go play pickup or something and and get going again. So I definitely highly recommend it to anyone who struggles with fatigue and soreness after after they work out. Absolutely, I do too. Absolutely. Now before you go, what is your favorite Zensaw product? that you use other than the heat recovery sock, what is your favorite product that you find yourself using almost one. all the time? That's too hard. Well, okay, what do you find yourself using the most? The one that I use the most is the recovery tights. So those ones, oh. um, if I ever go on like a really long run or, or um, just work out, do a hard workout, throw on the recovery tights before I go to bed, wear them to sleep, wake up, I feel great. Um, my favorite one like that I wear probably most is the grit running socks. Um, so those I wear every day. Those are, those are really great. Um, and then I never run without the featherweight leg sleeves. I I never, before I worked at Zensa, I never used to run with leg sleeves. And then ever since I started, I have not been able to run without them. Well, I want to say a quick perception about the leg sleeves. A lot of people, especially we're here in Florida, we have this issue. I know the rest of the country's freezing and frozen this week, but here in Florida, it gets really hot, right? So when you're running, you think, I'm not going to wear leg sleeves or compression tights or, you know, whatever it is, because it's so hot here. They really don't make you any hotter than you're already going to be outside. They, they help, you know, they, you can feel the difference. You don't feel so swollen while I don't feel swollen while I run when I have compression socks on or um, compression sleeves. But I do want to note when you said the grit socks, your socks are my favorite. I wear them every time I run out of every sock I've tried for running. They are the only ones I've never gotten blisters and they make your feet feel awesome. So absolutely. I definitely agree with you. So other than that, thank you so much for coming on to the, on to today's podcast. I'm looking, I'm really looking forward for everybody else being able to get a pair of the heat recovery socks and I'm excited for everybody. And other than that, I hope to have you on the show soon. Again, hopefully maybe with another product launch. Definitely. Awesome. I'd love to. And anything else you want to say before we head out? Um, just keep an eye on the emails. Uh, go sign up and you'll, you'll be the first to be able to get one when it's, when it's launched. Awesome. Well, with, with that, I will let you go tonight and I hope everybody else has another wonderful rest of their night. And of course, you have to go out there and run your lives. Bye guys.